Imagine this. It's the 1970s and you're an African American here in America. Now, you don't have many rights as to uh, eat at certain restaurants or uh, drink water from public drink fountains. Now, you want change. And you hear somebody will be giving a uh, speech. You hear somebody's going to try to motivate you, your community. The room you're in is hot. Everyone is sweating, but you're still there for change. I am somebody. I am somebody. I am. I, I may be poor. I may be poor. But I am. But I am. Somebody. Somebody. I may be on welfare. I may be on welfare. But I am. But I am. Somebody. Somebody. I may be uneducated. I may be uneducated. But I am. But I am. Somebody. Somebody. These were the inspiring words spoken by a young Jesse Jackson. Jesse Jackson is a political leader a religious minister, and a orator. The speech we'll be analyzing is one he spoke during the civil rights movement. We, uh, I will first be talking to you about, we will first discuss why we chose a speaker, second, the significance of the speech, third, the communi con uh, communication concepts he has, he uses, and lastly, the ability he has as a speaker to inspire us. We, uh, the reason we chose Jesse Jackson was we wanted a speaker. We wanted somebody that had a powerful voice, somebody that was a leader, and somebody that was persuasive. We came across Jesse Jackson, who was born in 1941, uh, October 18, 1941, in Greenville, South Carolina. Jesse Jackson had always shown dedication. He graduated 10th of his high school class and went on to college through a football scholarship. Uh, according to Joho's 2007 biography on Jesse Jackson, also according to Joho, as a senior in college, he became a civil rights leader, uh, civil rights movement leader. He encouraged many students to participate and protest against discriminatory uh, actions as by demonstrating and staging boycotts. He has many great speeches, but the one that took her attention was the delivery of I Am Somebody. Upon finding this video, we were captivated by his tone. Jesse, um, the, um, I Am Somebody by Jesse Jackson is actually a poem, but the way he delivered it that day, he said it as a speech. According to Entertainment Weekly, he has also recited the original poem on a television show, Sesame Street, to try to inspire kids at an early age. Now that I talked about the significance of the speech, I'll talk about, now I'll talk about the significance of the speech. We believe it is significant because it calls out people to speak out for their rights. In the original poem, he tells people to, he tells kids to believe in themselves and the speech he turned, uh, and as the speech he turned it into, he tells people to take action in the way they want to hear it. He encourages to not look upon yourselves, to look, to look, to not look down upon yourself, and realize that in God's view you are all equal. Here are some of the words that he used to prove equality. You are not put here to be a white man's tool. You are here to represent the very best in God's words. Now I'll leave you with Carmen to tell you about the communication concepts Jesse Jackson uses in his speech. Yes, I will be telling you about the communication concepts that he used specifically on this speech. Uh, but before, I would like you to pay attention because at the end I will have a, like a Jeopardy game and the first one to answer the questions will get a prize. Um, in the Encyclopedia Britannica says that Jesse Jackson is a 
a very articulate and um, dynamic speaker. And he is known for his impassionate, uh, adv impassionate advocacy for empowerment, peace, and social justice. He starts his speech, um, he, he starts it with uh, audience-centered uh, perspective. He, audience-centered perspective means that he takes the needs, the attitudes, and the values of the people and then puts it into his speech. And um, then he also uh, starts uh, with repeating the phrase, I am somebody, and he repeats it often. And this in our textbook, uh, pocketbook uh, for public speaking, 2007, uh, it's called anaphora. Anaphora means that you repeat a word or a phrase at uh, the beginning of uh, consecutive uh, sentences, clauses, or phrases during the speech, the rest of the speech. And um, that is also used for emphasis. He also uses the grammatical um, form of the, the active voice. Active voice, um, the active voice is the verb. Uh, the verb tells the subject what to do and this, um, empowers people, motivates people to, to do something. You know what? And then, uh, finally, the, um, the, the articulation and dynamism. Articulation and dynamism is what grabs your attention and takes you um, all the way from the beginning of the speech all the way to the end of the speech. Now, uh, we're going to start the, the question. <laughs> the rhetorical device used in this speech is, and here's the little Something that is repetition. Do you remember what is the name of? Yeah. Anna. Yes. Here's one for you. <laughs> <laughs> and the next question is: What part of the grammar of in the speech helps the people to get motivated to act? Different tonalities. The active voice. Active voice. The, the use of the verb in an active form. <laughs> okay. Um, what is the perspective of the speech? What perspective uh, Mr. Jackson used on um, this speech? It's taking the values and the needs of the people and putting it into the uh, speech, integrating it into the speech. Um, with analysis. Yeah, there's two. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. And the third, the last one, what keeps the attention from the beginning to the end of the speech? What are the, the things? The dynamism and the articulation. What moves up? Huh? The tone? Yeah. Yes. Part of it. The dynamism, yes. Well, now I will be with Brittany, and she will tell you about um, the ability of Jesse Jackson to inspire others. <laughs> 